I feel like this has been a sentiment that we have been seeing, um, not only from Canon, but we also heard some people talking about this in the Nikon space as well. Yes. Uh, and this is this new idea that cameras are somehow getting worse. And that's hard for me to believe. Cause like when I see these stories popping up, I'm just like, no, they're not like, we're getting better cameras than we've ever gotten, almost to a point where they're almost too good and there's like really nothing to talk about. It's like, yeah, this camera's great. What about the next one? Yeah, it's 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 also great. But people, because the internet is the internet, they decide they still want to find little problems here and there, but these problems might be more important than we thought. And so I know you have this story dialed up, so I'll let you go ahead and kind of just run us through what's currently going on and why are people freaking out? Yeah, definitely. So production units of the R5 Mark II are already out in the wild and people are doing tests on them. And one of the things that they're realizing is, is the the sensor from the original R5 is a different sensor in the R5 Mark II. Uh, it's just a normal, normal CMOS sensor in the R5 Mark I. Uh, but this new one is a backside illuminated uh, uh, semi semi stacked. Is it semi stacked? Is it, it's not semi stacked. It's I don't uh, think so. what's the oh gosh partial stacked or partially stacked yeah. sensor, all with the hopes of having faster readout speeds. Now that sounds great. Less rolling shutter, awesome. That's great. But the problem with that is is what's being reported from DP Review is that the faster readout is contributing to less dynamic range from the R5 Mark One, and so uh, they basically took multiple photos and especially in the shadows they saw that there's about a stop or less of dynamic range uh in from the r52 to the r to the r51 so just for clarification on that so you're talking about one this is a photography thing yes this is not video yes and this is like less than a stop difference between the two and this is because of this partial this partial stack stack sensor. Yes. You know, a lot of people, you know, I mean, rightfully so sometimes. They give me uh they give me a little bit of hate mm -hmm. because I over glorify I don't think I over glorify, but a lot of people think I over glorify the benefits of a full on global shutter. Mm -hmm. And I praise what Red has done in the Komodo X and in the Raptor X, because not only were they able to do a full global shutter, but they also still have amazing dynamic range. Which is kind of magical. It, it is very magical, but I think today it's even more magical when you start seeing that, like, these other camera brands, like, they're trying to do the same thing. Like, the whole purpose of a partial stack sensor is they're trying to get a faster readout from top to bottom. Mm-hmm to eliminate some of the jelloing and some of the rolling shutter, but also to be able to just take more photos faster yeah. while also being able to do this with a um, electronic shutter, mm -hmm. right? Which is kind of the way, I think that's the way of the future. I think they're all trying to perfect this electronic shutter because one, you can take faster photos. Two, it eliminates a physical element of the camera, which mm -hmm. then makes the camera cheaper and more durable. And so these things are happening, but the same thing that we've said, we saw it with the uh, Sony, the Sony A9 III. A9 III, when they went global yeah. shutter, they saw a drastic decrease in the dynamic range. Mm -hmm. And that in typically, in typical fashion, is the unfortunate future of a global shutter or a partial stack uh, sensor uh, is that you're going to run into a dynamic range test. But we're talking about photos and we're talking about less than a half a stop or yeah. maybe a full stop. I think it's I think yeah. their photos side by side. It just really depended from photo to photo. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know, maybe because I'm not a big into photography. Like, do we care? Like, yeah. I don't know. So this is where it's a little bit difficult because uh, when there's a flaw in a camera, I don't want to dress it up as like, oh, it's not that big of a problem. But what we're talking about, especially with tools like Lightroom and Photoshop with denoise, bro, yes. it is a click of a button and all that extra noise. Because it's not saying that there isn't detail in the image. 
mm-hmm. it's really just saying there's going to be a lot more, a lot more. There's more no noise than the R1, than the R5, Mark 1. In the shadows. In the shadows. But the information is still there. The information is still there. And so, like, really, you're talking about click and denoise, and now all of a sudden, it's making everything look crispy. So that's where it's a little caveat in there. And I, I kind of enjoy, me personally, yes, they're adding video features that are making things better for video. And we kind of have a somewhat denoising feature for photos. So like if video gets better and, and photos suffer a little bit in extreme cases, I, I don't know that that's like a, a, a loss. So I have a I have a I have a question that I'd love for you to answer and chat. I'd love for you guys to answer this as well. So do me a favor, put it down in the chat your answer to this. But what is a and it could be dynamic range for you. That that could just be your answer. But what is a feature or a specification within a camera that should never be sacrificed with the hopes of making or adding additional features or making the camera better in another way. Because I do start to feel like, and this is just my opinion, like when it comes to cameras, we have this like body type, right? Like we have the, like the design of a camera, every Canon, Sony, Nikon, the body's about the same. You go to any average Joe, and you just show them the silhouette. They won't be able to tell you the difference between one camera and another, but they'll be able to say, oh, yeah, that's a camera, yeah. right? So we've all agreed that this body type of a camera is what we think is the most ideal form for cameras. So we're always going to be limited by either trying to make the tech smaller so it fits into the same body type, mm-hmm. or you got to take something out, make something worse to add something new in or to update the processor or something's got to give. Cause I feel like we have kind of peaked when it comes to the design of the camera. So the question now becomes what forms or what features do you think is a non-negotiable? You can never affect this in the camera in order to ensure that we keep our same cameras. Hmm. What's the non-negotiable for you? What cannot what cannot be adjusted? <sighs> what would I be mad at? Uh, it can, or cannot change? Yeah. Oh. At the end of the day, this is going to sound like maybe like a cop out. Dynamic range is so important on video. Like I don't care if you went up to twelve k if your crap looks grainy and noisy. Like. Uh, I do not care about high frame rates uh, as much as I care about dynamic range. So if you could push dynamic range better, um, do I even care about codecs? <sighs> you can't give me. Yeah, you can't go back to eight. We can't go back to 8-bit. See, that's what we I was going to say. We can't go back to 8-bit. We can't. I mean, yeah. in the world of video, <laughs> I'll speak specifically for video first. I will say like you have to have 10 bit as a bare minimum, Mm -hmm. right? Like that's the bare minimum entry into the field. That said, I do think that possibly like sacrificing a little bit of photography dynamic range only because I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. And again, I know that photographers are like, no, we want the most out of our cameras too, which I totally understand. But there's just so much more currently in like the raw photography workflow mm-hmm. where like a half a stop of di- a half a stop of dynamic range to improve everything else that the camera could do I think is worth the trade off mm-hmm. that said if we can start getting that same type of raw workflow in the world of video yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't start seeing something similar mm-hmm. but you just got to remember that like you can just edit the crap out of a single frame but video is so much more difficult to deal with and so I think that's where People are going to disagree a mm-hmm. little bit, but I personally say that like when it comes to video, I don't want to drop below 10 bit ever again because yes. uh, that's just almost impossible to work with. And then I will say that like dynamic range, I'm willing to give up a little bit of dynamic range on the photography side of things. Yeah. Um, what I wouldn't want to give up on the photo- on the photography side of things is um, all of the autofocusing features. Once you start losing autofocusing features, (laughs) 
To me, that I'm out. Good. I'm out. Like I, you don't. But touch. what are you choosing? What do you mean? Bit depth over autofocus. Like which one cannot go? <sighs> I think I can let go of autofocus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, in the world of video, I'll, Dude, manage, I'll put some cinema bit lenses for on. So long, it was eight bit for so long, and when ten bit came, the lights turned on, and anything above ten bit. It's like, what were we doing five years ago, six yeah. years ago? We weren't grading. I'll tell you that much. <laughs>